Hello everybody, my name is Brandon Hopkins. I am a Linode Developer Advocate, and what we're gonna be doing in this video is setting up a web application through Docker called Baby Buddy. What this self-hosted application is going to do is allow us to track things like diapers, feedings, height, weight, things like that for your children, or a really good use case for this would be if you are a babysitter, you run an in-home daycare or a typical brick and mortar daycare service. The childcare facility that I send my children to has a service just like this, and it's really cool to know when they slept, how much they ate, things like that. And that software is probably closed source and really expensive. So something like this is really good if you're just getting started or if you're just a parent who wants a free resource to track all this kind of stuff yourself. So with that, let's go ahead and install it, secure it, and then actually check out what we have available to us. All right, so here we are, cloud.linode.com, and now the very first thing that we are going to do is get a token for easily setting up our domain. If we go over here and go to API tokens, and create a personal access token. I'm gonna to call this uh, Buddy for now. Now what this is going to do is allow us to use the combination of the Node's domain name manager as well as their one-click installer to do some heavy lifting for us. Using this will automatically create an A record so that we will have our subdomain set up and then that one-click installer will go ahead and do some configurations for us such as the host name as well as some prerequisites. So to do that, let's go create the Node and we're going to be doing this through Docker. So let's go over to the marketplace and then search up Docker here, select that. And then we're going to go ahead and scroll down under advanced options. These first two, we could go ahead and ignore and let's create a limited pseudo user. I'm just going to go with the username, Brandon, give my pseudo username, a password. Here is a public SSH key. I do recommend you look into this. We'll leave a link down below, but for the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and skip that. And here is where we're going to go ahead and paste our API token to set up that domain name for us, as well as the hosts and all that. Now for the subdomain, you can see I've been uh, testing and playing around with this quite a bit, but I'm going to go ahead and call this one buddy. And this is going to be at hopkey.net and then put in your user email address there. We're not going to be sending emails from here, so we could say no to both of these. For the image here, let's go with the last Ubuntu LTS. You can go with Debian as well if you would like to. For the region, just go ahead and select whatever server is closest to you. For me, it's going to be California. And then here under shared CPU, I'm going to go with the Nanode one gigabyte plan. This is a small service, so this is going to be more than good enough. As you add more containers, services, whatever it may be, you can go ahead and upgrade this down the road. So for the label, I'm just going to call this uh, Docker dash baby buddy, and then give myself a strong, complicated and secure root password. Here's a spot for SSH keys as well as VLANs, but we're going to go ahead and create our Linode as is. Now, since we are using their one click installer, it's going to go through and grab some dependencies such as Docker, Docker Compose and all that. So it might take a little longer than your normal Linode startup. We could go ahead and launch the Lish console to actually see exactly what it is doing in the background. And we can see Ubuntu booting up here and eventually we're going to see it start installing some of those dependencies. And once we get a little login prompt, we could go ahead and log in via SSH. And there's that login prompt. So now that our Linode is set up with Docker, let's go ahead and actually install this container and get it up and running. So let's go back over here, give our IP address a copy, and then dive on to our Windows terminal. Let's SSH into our limited pseudo user we just created, and then paste in that IP address. Hit enter. This is our server, so I'm gonna say yes, and then I'm gonna go ahead and type in that password we created in the one-click installer. So here we go, we are now in our server. So the first thing that you should always do, sudo apt update as well as a sudo apt upgrade, just to make sure we have all the latest repositories and packages. And it is just about finished up, and there we go. So now that we are updated, what we're gonna do is go back to our web browser here real fast and head over to the baby buddy documentation. Here we could go to setup and deployment and we are gonna be using Docker Compose. We're gonna be using this right here. So go ahead, give that entire thing a copy and then we're gonna head back to our terminal. All right, Brandon from the future here. I've kind of been playing around with this for a while and I decided on a, or I figured out a slightly better configuration than the one that we were using. So what you're gonna to want to do is go nano compose.yaml, hit enter just like that and this is what we are going to be using here. In their documentation, if we go under deployment, it's gonna look somewhat similar to this, but we're gonna be adding a couple environmental variables. What you can see here is our PUNPGIDs as a thousand, as well as CSRF underscore trusted origins, 
and you're going to want to put in the domain that you intend on using as HTTPS. Now, if you don't plan on using a domain and you're just going to connect to the IP address, you don't need to put this, but this is highly recommended. Additionally, I do recommend putting the config volume under your home, your username, a baby buddy folder, or really whatever you want to call it. And that is where we're going to store our config. We're going to keep the ports on 8,000 because we're just going to be using a proxy to point our domain to this and restart unless stopped. At this point, you could go control O, enter to save it, control X to exit out. And then we're going to use this command sudo docker compose up dash D to run this compose file. The dash D makes it attached so you're not in a terminal that will just close out the whole application when you close out the terminal and it will be running in the background. So from there hit enter and you'll be good to go. And then you could see it's pulling on our images and getting everything set up for us. And right there you could see creating baby buddy done. So it's at this point you technically if you don't care about using an IP address, a port, or an unsecured domain name, you have it set up and ready to go and I'll show you that real quick. So if we go back to docker baby buddy copy this IP address, paste it on in, and then add the port we set this up on, which is 8000. You can see we have the baby buddy login. Additionally, because the Linode domain name manager added the A record for us, if we go to buddy.hopkey.net, this will work as well, but you can see here it's not secure. And now that it's up and running, we're gonna use Nginx to create a proxy to properly point it to our domain name as well as giving it an SSL certification. And there are some steps on their website, but I'm gonna run through real quick what worked for me. We are gonna be using this configuration down here a little bit later, but for now, let's go ahead and get our proxy set up. And the very first thing we're gonna do is install Nginx. So that's sudo apt install engine x hit enter and then enter to continue with the installation and to make sure installed correctly we could do sudo engine x dash t for test and you could see the configuration file is okay and successful so for this to open up to the outside world we're going to need to let it through our firewall so sudo ufw which is the firewall and we could do status just to see if it's running and all that you can see it is active in our rules we have here so what we're going to do is add a new rule and that rule is going to be sudo ufw allow and then we're going to want to do engine x full hit enter rule added so now if i do status again you can see those new rules now it's at this point we should be able to jump back to our web browser here and then go to our subdomain here i'm going to do this in a new tab hit enter and we can see welcome to nginx this shows us that it did install correctly and we are able to connect at least to the non-secure connection so let's go ahead and turn it into a secure connection and to do that let's go ahead and install certbot and we're going to be installing the python 3 certbot for nginx which will do a vast majority of the heavy lifting for us so from here let's go ahead and hit y to continue and there we go it's installed now, according to the baby buddy documentation, it asks us to go ahead and set up the proxy first, but I had much better luck getting the certificate and then setting up the proxy. So I'm going to go ahead and paste in certbot nginx d for domain name, and we are going to ask for a certificate on the buddy.hopkey.net. Hit enter. And from here, you're going to want to type in your email address. Hit enter. It's going to ask you to read the terms of service. I do highly recommend you do that. I have, so I'm going to agree. And I've already given them this before, so I'm going to say no when it comes to sharing the email address. So now if you followed all the steps up to this point, it should go ahead and verify with no issues. If you see this, that means you don't have any issues and we're going to set this as a redirect, meaning all HTTP traffic will automatically direct to HTTPS. Hit enter. And there we go. Congratulations, your certificate is now saved and it has the location and all that there. So now if I open up our web browser and I add a good old S right here, enter, we can see we now have a secure connection. So what we need to do now is set up a proxy. So that way this domain will take us to this port thus securing the Docker container. So if I go over here to the baby buddy documentation, we can see this right here. This is the configuration that we are going to be using. Like I said, following this step-by-step -step didn't work for me. As it says here, certbot should have updated this site's configuration. It should look like this. We're gonna have to do this ourselves. So let's give that a copy. And then from there, let's go ahead and CD into that directory. So it's gonna be CD Etsy Nginx. And then we're gonna go into sites available LS. 
And you can see we have a default configuration there. What I'm gonna do is create a new one and I'm gonna call it nano. And this is gonna be our buddy.hopkey.net. Hit enter. And then of course do this as sudo so it is actually writable. And then paste in that configuration. So we are gonna need to change a couple of things. All of this looks good, but under server name, you're gonna want to change this to your actual uh, subdomain that you set up. So for me, it is buddy dot hopkey dot net right here under proxy pass this is the port for the container so if you did change that for some reason you'd want to change it there and then here for the ssl certificate location we're going to want to change that to our domain so buddy spell it right dot hopkey dot net do the same thing right here buddy dot hopkey dot net and then just make sure there's nowhere else that needs changed right here if host is equal to we're going to change this so buddy dot hopkey dot net and right here under server name. So that's gonna be buddy.hopkey.net and we're good to go. So let's control O to output that control X. And now what we're gonna do is create a system link between the sites available file we just created and add it to sites enabled. So to do that, it's ln s and then we're gonna do the sites available file and point it to our buddy.hopkey.net and then run through the same thing. We're gonna do Etsy Nginx, but this time we're gonna do sites-enabled and then point that to the new file or the new linked file of buddy.hopkey.net. Hit enter. And like always, like I always forget to do, run this as your sudo user. There we go. So now to load these new sites and files, then we're gonna to need to reload Nginx. We can do that with sudo system ctl reload and nginx.service. Hit enter. And there were no issues that came up. That is very good. So now after all of that, if I head back over to our web browser, you can see this site right here. Welcome to Nginx. Let's go ahead and give this a refresh. And you can see it has taken us to baby buddy. And now that we're in, let's go ahead and actually dive into the software and see some of the features that we have available to us. All right. So admin, admin are the defaults. If we go ahead and hit log in, here we are on our main dashboard. Now, obviously using admin as the password isn't the best idea. So you could go ahead under your user profile here under user and password and change it from there. Additionally, before we go ahead and add a child here, let's go to settings and see what they got going on. Here you have some pretty basic user settings. So first name, last name, email address, dashboard refresh rate, API keys, etc. So you could check that out if you'd like to. And if we hit this again, under site, we have the API browser. You can add additional users and you have the database admin. So if I go to users, for example, I have the admin, I could create a new user. So if I'm to do that, we have the username, first name, last name, a lot of the same information. And right here under staff stats, this indicates whether or not if somebody can log in as an administrator to this website. So you do have some control for things like this. Like I said, if you're running like an at-home daycare or you're looking to add your uh, spouse, for example. So now welcome to baby buddy. We have diaper changes, feeding, sleep, and tummy time. Let's go ahead and add a child. So let's make a fake child. Let's just do my name since it's auto-filling for me. We have our birthday here. Let's just say the child is exactly a year old today as of recording. So that would be the 20th. And then we have pictures. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose a picture and add in this random picture I just dropped in from the internet of some clip art. So let's open that up and hit submit. So now you can see the first child. Their first name is Brandon. Has some information, I can edit the child here. And of course, add more. And if you have a lot here, again, for example, if you're running a daycare or something, you can click filters and try to find children by their name. So now from here, if I go back to dashboard, it's going to look a little different. There's gonna be a lot more data and statistics as now, instead of just the normal dashboard, I'm under this specific child's dashboard. If I do go back one to children, you could see that, go to Brandon, this is the account. If I go to dashboard, it's gonna default me to the one child. Now up here is where we have our measurements and activities. So under children, for example, we have children and notes, Right here under measurements, we can measure the BMI, head circumference, height, temperature, and weight. So this is really good to do, for example, if you have your child in here and you want to input data from your doctor visits or just be able to easily track your child's growth. For example, if I wanted to do a weight entry, 
Uh, one year old, let's say 22 pounds. You can add tags, all that, hit submit, and now we have the weight entry. And for measurements, it works just about the same here. Let's go back to the dashboard. And you can see here that there's not gonna be enough data because it's going off of a weight change per week. And then there's gonna be over buttons to see different data sets as you go ahead and compile those. Now, activities. This is where you can have some fun. You have your changes, your feedings, pumping, sleep, and tummy time. Let's say you're babysitting and you want to report that a child has taken a nap. We're gonna to go to sleep entry. Now I'm recording this late at night, so I kind of have to put a funny time here to uh, properly demonstrate this. So let's say you took a little nap at this time and I put in a note after play time, which again, ignore the actual times for this example. Hit submit, there we go, we took a 46 minute nap. And now if I go to dashboard, we can see recent sleep, there has been 46 minutes. It's not really counting that as a nap at the moment, but 46 minutes of sleep is still decent. And under statistics, you can see that if we go over, there's um, average awake duration, weight changes per week. So as we add more data, we get more statistics available to us. So now let's say it's uh, they woke up at 48. So let's go to activities and let's say they woke up Nate right away. So we're gonna add a new feeding, and this right here works perfectly fine. The type, we have breast milk, formula, fortified breast milk, or solid food. Let's say that we had some formula, method, bottle, and you can go all the way up to parent-fed, self-fed, but we're gonna say we fed this kid a bottle, and maybe about four ounces upon waking up. And you can leave a note like woke up hungry. And then submit that, and there we go. We have a four ounce formula, and if I go to the dashboard, you can see the last feeding. It says ago because it was now, basically. But formula bottle, last feeding method bottle. So as we add more, like I said, we're gonna getting a lot more data. So now under activities, it's all really gonna work the same when it comes to tummy time, changes. So now let's say, oh, we gotta change a diaper. Woke up with a wet diaper. We have color here. Let's say it was a little yellow. So I'm gonna see if I can leave that blank. Under notes, we're gonna say woke up wet and then hit submit. And there's some emojis there. You could see it's kind of cute. And then like everything else, if I go back to dashboard here, we have our last diaper change. And as you add more and more data, you'll get more and more statistics and things to kind of compare it to. And then right here we have timers. So if I want to go ahead and start a timer for whatever activity or thing that I am actually need a timer for, you could do it right here. So that is Baby Buddy. That is how to get it spun up on a Linode. So with that, I do hope you enjoyed this video. Again, there'll be links down below to various documentation to help you out and give you even more information that will go well beyond the scope of this video. And like always, there are a ton of wonderful videos on this channel by a bunch of different creators. So I do recommend you subscribe and ring that bell so you do not miss the latest in Linode's cloud computing content. And with all that, I do hope you have a wonderful day and goodbye.